Greetings gamers, I'm Bedroth, and I'm Shoot Kapow, and you're listening to Season 2 of Very Good Music, a VGM podcast. everyone and welcome to season two of Very Good Music. This is a father-son road trip through the wide world of VGM where we explore new VGM, old VGM, just VGM in general, <laughs> remixes, covers, chiptune, orchestral stuff, you know, whatever suits our fancy. And Shukapau decided to kick season two off with this topic. This episode's topic is side games and spin-offs, like Mario Kart, Mystery Dungeon, and games like that. And what was the game that you pulled your first track from? This is Sky Tower from Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Red Rescue Team for the Game Boy Advance, developed by Chunsoft and released by Nintendo in 2005 and composed by Arata Iyoshi. Okay. Well, that was quite a song. Um, I have heard Sky Tower before uh, on one podcast or another, but I don't think I've actually sat and listened to it in its entirety with such intensity as you were inspiring in me. <laughs> it's, it's really good. The instrumentation is interesting and not what I would expect from a Pokemon game. That mix of um, you know, pseudo-orchestral type instruments and those very techno poppy bloopy sounds. That's Mystery Dungeon for you. <laughs> so tell me a little about this game. What makes Mystery Dungeon different from the Pokemon games proper? Unlike normal turn-based RPGs like Final Fantasy, Chrono Trigger, JRPGs, stuff like that, um, Mystery Dungeon is more of a strategy-based dungeon crawler. Okay. You, at the start, you have a Pokemon that you're given, and if you don't like it, you can choose any of the other ones. Then you get another Pokemon to be your companion, and you go on, like... When you say you, do you mean the trainer? No, the... Well, the person actually becomes a Pokemon, and that's oh. sort of what the whole main story is centered around. Okay. 
Gotcha. And, uh, so you're like a were Pikachu. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, in Red Rescue Team, Blue Rescue Team, and uh, the, the most recent installment, the remakes of these games, Mystery Dungeon DX, mm-hmm. most of the game is the post game. <laughs> like, okay. the second two thirds to three quarters. Okay, so the story itself is fun, but it's really about all the like stuff that you do afterward. Yeah. It's weird, because usually you have to do all the grinding up front to get to the fun part. <laughs> but here, the fun part is the grinding, and you don't even really have to do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's, that's I mean, quite a feat. <clears throat> I haven't even gotten to the big main story part yet, and I'm already a pretty high rank, gold rank. <laughs> Okay, cool. So, I feel like maybe advancing the story now. <laughs> Alright, well, you weren't actually too excited about the game when you played the demo, so what was it that won you over about this game? Chugga Conroy once again. <laughs> once again, Chugga Conroy. Alright, well, um, what are some other songs from this game that you almost went to? Or was it going to be Sky Tower from the beginning? Yeah, Sky Tower was my... It was kind of what made me think of doing this episode in the first place. Oh, okay, cool. Well, then that's definitely a fitting place to start. (laughs) Well, for my first spinoff game, I'm going to call back to a song that we played a while back. We played Tron Bond's theme from Mega Man Legends back when we did our Rivals, Rogues, and Frenemies episode. uh, Episode 3 of Season 1 which is still, I believe, our most downloaded episode to date, interestingly enough. (laughs) I'm going to play from The Misadventures of Tron Bon, a tune called Redhead Kobun to the Rescue. I will talk a little bit about that title, as well as a little bit more about the details of the track when we come back. back. That was Redhead Koban to the Rescue from The Misadventures of Tron Bon. That was composed by Toshihiko Horiyama, and the game was developed and published by Capcom for the PlayStation 1. This was released in Japan in 1999 and North America and Europe in 2000. And it is not, by any means, the only game on my playlist tonight that is from the 90s. I am bringing the retro today. <laughs> And I have a lot of really fun tracks in store, but this one, this one may be the most fun. And I've got a Kirby game on this list. Ooh. <laughs> uh, Redhead Koban, I believe, refers to one of Tron Bon's serve bots. I think I might have talked about them on the other episode, but they're like her servants because Tron Bon's like a, a rich girl type pirate girl thing. <laughs> anyway, and Redhead Koban is a specific serve bot that has red head parts. So it's not like a red-headed person. He, it's literally a robot with a red head. And uh, apparently in this scene you're rescuing the Bond siblings because they've gotten into some kind of trouble. And that's about as far as I got down the Wikipedia page before it was time to start the episode. <laughs> you just did all your research now. Yep. Yep. I'm going to be doing my research while you play your songs. <laughs> okay. That's what you get for springing a, hey, let's do this episode. 
on me, because then I just want to record, and I... Well, I mean, you said that we should do it tonight instead of tomorrow night. Yeah, I know, because I don't know when is the next time we'll be able to record. Um, we're recording this, actually, in the summer, um, before episode 11 even comes along, because we want to build up a little bit of um, a backlog of episodes again, since Shuka Pao is, hopefully, knock on wood, going to be starting school in the fall. <laughs> And, uh, well, starting, like, real live, actual, in-person school. <laughs> but we don't really know yet. Uh, but we are going to be busy, for sure. Um, Mom is starting a new job. Um, all of you are starting to school. I'm still going to be doing my work stuff. And we will have just come off of an epic two-part episode uh, that all the rest of you just heard a couple of weeks ago. And, yeah, I don't know how much time we're going to have. So we need to do this. <laughs> we have a busy summer, rest of the summer ahead of us. But enough about that. What did you think of this song? That was a very fun, bouncy track. It really is. Um, did it remind you of any other Mega Man songs? Hmm. Um. Uh. Maybe like Storm Eagle to an extent. To an extent. Uh, it's got some similar sound fonts, I think, to the Mega Man X songs, or Mega Man X games. But something about that B section, the do 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 my brain wanted to go do 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 ba 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 <laughs> Yeah, so to me it harkened back to, I think that's Sparkman, which is really going to be silly for the rest of y'all, because like I said, you just heard us do the big Mega Man 2 and 3 episodes. <laughs> But anyway, yeah, really, really fun, um, really driving. It's a great jogging song, I think. Not that I do a lot of, of that, but... Uh, Snake Man. Yes, how can I forget Snake Man? Awesome, awesome Snake Man. Okay, cool, thank you. That would have been bugging me all night, at least until I went and listened to the whole soundtrack to look it up. But I knew it was Mega Man 3. Sad because Sparkman's my favorite, so you, you think I would recognize it. Although Snake Man really kind of crept up on me, you could say it slithered into my soul like a snake. <laughs> Not a video podcast; your facial expressions don't work, but the squeaking chair definitely does come through. All right, except when you try, apparently. So, anything else to say about the music? Uh, not really. Okay. Anything to say about your next music? Well, I'm bringing something that's also pretty retro and also groovy. Groovy? Is it Earthworm Jim? No. No, because you don't get that reference. Groovy! So what is it? This is called Mirror Bee's Retro Groove from Pokemon Coliseum. More Pokemon. All right. We got to catch them all. Oh my gosh! <laughs> 
go ahead before I go off on a tangent. All right, Pokemon Coliseum was released in 2003 for the Nintendo GameCube, composed by Sukasa Tawada and developed by Genius Sonority. That was fantastic. <laughs> I know. <laughs> oh man, that was so much fun. I really hope that Robin Purnell listened to this episode. They would totally get a kick out of this. <laughs> oh man, I'm, I'm definitely going to have to run this one by them. Pokemon Coliseum. Who knew? I had a buddy that uh, was into Pokemon Stadium back when I was in high school. Uh, I totally missed out on the whole generation where Pokemon Coliseum was a thing. But I know you haven't played this game. What do you know about it? Um, not much. Uh, I'm on the Pokemon wiki here for Mirror B's page. Uh, that's Mirror spelled with one R in the middle instead of two. Okay. Uh, Mirror B is a character and antagonist that first appears in Pokemon Coliseum. He was one of the Cypher admins, so one of the uh, antagonists, I'm pretty sure. And he's well known for having his own theme music, which is amazing. It is amazing. This is not what I would peg for antagonist theme music. This is like the party guy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Mirror B's personality is extremely flamboyant, and he's always seen dancing, so okay, it's... Uh, that does make sense. Yeah. This, man, this is so good. Ah, oh, I'm excited. If the rest of your music is as good as your first <laughs> couple of tracks, we are in for a really, really great night of music. Great way to start off season two. Well, I've got Kirk on here, so... Ah, uh, well, there you go. There you go. Um, I don't have a lot of the, the really well-known composers on here tonight. Um, it's it's going to be interesting, even with, um, not to spoil anything, but names like uh, Mega Man, Street Fighter, Kirby... It's not some of the big names that you have come to know and love from Very Good Music, a VGM podcast, and other such video game music radio shows. I think I've got more of that. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, I found cool. out about this theme on a YouTube channel, a Pokemon YouTuber I watch by the name of MNJ TV. Okay. He uses this as his background on like all of his videos. So. Okay. Well, I can see why. Guy's got good taste. <laughs> Uh, Pokemon Coliseum, if it's anything like Pokemon Stadium, then you can upload your Pokemon from, like, portable games into it and get them to fight on a big, like, full-sized screen in awesome, amazing 3D with cool effects and stuff. <laughs> so it's literally, literally just... Pokemon Stadium, I believe, was just like that. It was just a battleground for your Pokemon. I don't know that there was a story mode. But, all you listeners out there... Uh, many of whom are younger than I am, uh, but still older than Chukapau, you can weigh in and you can correct us. That was really, really cool. Well, I am going to switch gears. Um, the next tune I have is uh, still up-tempo, still pretty driving. I will say it's not nearly as festive as that one. This is from the game Street Fighter 2010, The Final Fight, which is technically a spin-off of Street Fighter... But depending on where you played the game, doesn't really have anything to do with Street Fighter or Final Fight, which is not a spinoff of Street Fighter, but is connected. It's in the same universe as Street Fighter. This game is weird. We'll talk a little about it when we come back. But first, we're going to listen to Planet Themes 3, which I also saw called City Lights. I know I said I didn't have any really big name composers, and while she may not be on, like, I guess the same quote unquote level as your Yoko Shimomura's, your Yuzo Koshiro's, 
This lady is definitely well known in her own right as a Capcom composer. Uh, that was City Lights Planet Theme 3 from Street Fighter 2010, composed by Junko Tamiya. This game was published by Capcom for the NES in 1990. And we talked a little bit about Jun Junko Tamiya on our episode with Ed back on episode 10, when we did BG International, because uh, there was a remix of a Junko Tamiya tune from Bionic Commando that he brought to that. And what was the first thing you said when this song started? Sounds like Mega Man. <laughs> and ugh, I'm not great when it comes to like the post Mega Man 3 Mega Man games. I don't think Junko Tamiya composed any of the Mega Man games. I could be wrong. Once again, correct me if I'm wrong. Didn't do as much research before this episode as I usually do. But that's okay because the music is still fantastic. I know very little about this game. Uh, Street Fighter, of course, is a famous fighting game series. Street Fighter 2010 is a side-scrolling action game, kind of like Bionic Commando or Strider, which uh, Junko Tamiya composed the arcade version of. And the only connection that I know of that this really has to the Street Fighter universe is that in the English version, the main character, who I think is called Kevin in Japan, is renamed Ken, and he is supposedly the same Ken Masters from the Street Fighter games, although he's like a scientist now? And I don't, I don't know. It's weird. It's a spin-off game. <laughs> but what did you think of the song, other than that it sounded Mega Man e? It was pretty good. And we're back to that. Ugh, I guess I gotta pick up my game. Well, it's a good thing I've got some even better very good music coming up. But, yeah, not a whole lot to say about it, except I really love those guitar licks in this. The fake uh, chiptune guitar licks, but... Really, really good. This lady obviously really knew like what this era of rock music could sound like on a real guitar, and I can tell that she most likely picked up a real guitar and played some of these riffs and then just kind of transcribed what she wrote down and then somehow amazingly magically digitized it in some sort of ancient tracking software. Man, composing for these old systems... It really, it's just amazing to me what these folks did with the tools that they had at their disposal. But that's enough of me waxing nostalgic about stuff that happened way before you were born. <laughs> what have you got for us next? Next up, we have some Kirby Fighters. All right. From Kirby Fighters Deluxe, we have Koo's Forest. Oh, yes. I love Koo. Koo's great. He's my favorite of the little animal buddies, and his music is awesome. Is this a remix of Koo's theme? Mm -hmm. You are now my favorite child. <laughs> <laughs> back from a Kirby fighting game. Kirby Fighters Deluxe was released in 2014 
by Hal and Nintendo for the Nintendo 3DS and composed by Hirokazu Tanaka, Hirokazu Tanaka and Jun Ishikawa. Hirokazu Tanaka? Uh, I mean, that's what, uh... Are you sure it wasn't Hirokazu Ondo? That's who I was thinking about, Hirokazu Ondo. <laughs> Dang it. It's like, not Hip Tanaka. I, didn't, I think I would know if he ever composed a Kirby game. <laughs> that's okay, son. There's still time to redeem yourself. All right, well, I know that when I think of big, burly, bloody fighting games... I think of Kirby. <laughs> so this makes perfect sense. Why is Kirby fighting? And who is he fighting? What's going on? Kirby. Kirby's fighting Kirby. And also Kirby. King DDD. And also King D. Well, that, okay, that makes sense. That they fight a lot. That is there a story here, or...? Um, no, not really. Okay. This was a sub-game in, I think, Planet Robobot. And... Basically, it's... Just Kirby Smash Bros. Smash Bros, but with only Kirby. Okay, so... Is it... Was there a standalone version of it, too? Yeah, Kirby Fighters Deluxe. It was the, oh, okay, that's right. like, basically improved version. Gotcha, cool, okay. Um, so, can you play as Ku in this game? Or did they just, like, steal his theme from him? No, uh, uh, Ku's Forest is a stage. Rick Kine and Ku debut in it by, like, pushing out items from the trees in the background. Ah. You keep using that word. I do not think it means what you think it means. <laughs> you said debut. I think you mean cameo. Yeah, cameo. There we yeah. go. That's right. <laughs> but, oh man. See, to me that's a missed opportunity. Because if you could actually fight as Rick or Kine or Ku, like, take the Kirby Star Allies characters that you can be, put them in a Kirby fighting game. That would be super cool. But the music's really good. Ku's theme is always great. It... It's got this, like, almost Spanish or kind of Wild Western flair. Uh, those two things don't necessarily go together, except maybe with some of the instrumentation. But there's there's something about it. Maybe it's the whistle. Maybe that's what it is that's got me thinking about those things. But it's super good. And, and yeah. Koo is cool. I like Koo. We'll have to do, like, an Animal Buddies episode at some point, uh, because I was totally going to bring Koo's theme to that. So now I'll have to think of another theme. Uh, oh, I have one. Except this is not an Animal Buddies theme. This is another side quest, side game thing. <laughs> the reason Mission I said side quest is quest because the game thing <laughs> is called Final Fantasy Mystic Quest. Ooh. This was the first Final Fantasy game I ever played. And we'll hear a little bit more about it when we come back from listening to Battle 3. Ryuji Sasai and Yasuhiro Kawakami. That was Battle 3 from Final Fantasy Mystic Quest, or as it was called in Japan, Final Fantasy USA. Because this game was released in the States as sort of an easier RPG for the people who weren't really used to them, <laughs> used to what JRPGs were. This was published by Square for four normal regions. It was developed by Square. This was released on the SNES in 1992 in North America, and actually later in Japan, and in PAL regions. 
I'm sorry, am I interrupting you? No. Okay. You're like typing stuff over there, so. Uh, getting up my next song. <clears throat> oh, you're preparing? Yeah. Well, darn me for calling you out on preparing. <laughs> um, so, I'm not sure whether this was composed by Sasai or Kawakami, but before I get into that, what did you think? Were you expecting that to go where it went after that intro? No. It was <laughs> uh, very interesting. Yeah. It. So, the intro, uh, it's been a long time since I played this game. I'll tell the story in a minute. But... This uh, I think that this is one of like the big bads at the end of the game. Uh, that's why it's called Battle 3. It's the last battle theme on the soundtrack. And the opening is like an introduction when it, like the camera pans up or whatever and you see this big character that you're about to fight. And then the hard stuff kicks in. The drums and the strings and the glockenspiel and all the other stuff you associate with like hard rock music. Um, <laughs> but anyway, this game spawned a soundtrack that had exactly one print run, making it uh, relatively rare, sought after by collectors, according to FinalFantasy.Fandom.com. Um, the soundtrack was composed, as I said, by Ryuji Sasai and Yasuhiro Kawakami, um, and apparently the, the ROM for this particular game was not the ROM, and so the synthesizer was limited and compromises had to be made on the composition. Um, in order for them to each focus on what their strengths were most out of the sound that they had, it was decided that the harder tracks would be composed by Sasai and the softer tracks would be done by Kawakami. So when I first heard this done by Kawakami, because it's a little bit more softer, orchestral, a little more subdued, but no, I'm pretty sure that this was a Ryuji Sasai track, because that was a hard song. This soundtrack is really good. I had to listen to almost all of it, and I had like six of them shortlisted for this episode. In the end, I only picked this one over the other ones because it's it's a little bit different than the rest of my tracks, and I wanted to have a little more variety. But I would recommend anyone to give this one a try. I would also recommend anyone that if you're not like super into JRPGs, but you kind of like the idea of playing like an epic fantasy quest story, this is a really, really good entry point. It is simpler. It is not nearly as long as the other Final Fantasy games. When I played it, actually, I had to borrow a friend's cart, and the cart was corrupted and the save files wouldn't work. So I stayed up all night playing this game, and I actually almost beat it in just one night. <laughs> Which you cannot do for games like Final Fantasy IV and Final Fantasy VI, <laughs> or, you know, two and three, as they were called in the States. But, yeah. Cool song. Cool game. Definitely a spin-off. This is not a mainline Final Fantasy game. <laughs> well, that's it for me. What were you pulling up there a second ago when I got all dad on you? <laughs> on the topic of Final Fantasy, I've got something else from Square. Okay. This is Armed Boss from Super Mario RPG. Ooh, I almost went with Super Mario RPG. Now I'm glad I cut it. <laughs> I thought we were going to have too many Mario tunes. Did it, did it, did it. Super Mario RPG was released in 1996 for the SNES, developed by Square. Square. 
<laughs> and composed by Yoko Shimomura. <laughs> oh, I love this game so much! We're going to do an episode just about Super Mario RPG. Uh, if we can fit enough songs into just one episode. Chris and Matt couldn't. From the Wayback Podcast, they had to do two episodes <laughs> this summer. So if you guys want more Super Mario RPG, go check out the recent episodes from the Wayback uh, Video Game Music Podcast, where they go in-depth in the amazing, amazing soundtrack for this game. Yoko Shimomura is a goddess. <laughs> uh, okay, talk about it, talk about it, talk about it, go. All right. Man, this song, it's so, like, basic, but it's so diverse at the same time. Sort of. You could you could say that about several tracks on the Mario RPG soundtrack. I think when you say basic, you mean kind of minimalistic. It's not like a big, complicated orchestra. Um, it doesn't use very many in- instruments, or it doesn't seem to use as many instruments as it does. It's it's very straightforward in what it sets out to do, but when you go back and listen to it more, there is a surprising amount of complexity. This is a boss battle theme. Did you know that? Mm-hmm. Yeah. This is when, when you fight Smithy's gang. Uh, it's funny that they're called armed bosses, because... They're actually like weapons. <laughs> they don't just have weapons; they are weapons. <laughs> this this soundtrack is so good. I could just sit and listen to it all nights. So great. I I was going to go with the Yoster Isle theme because Yoshi is also kind of a spinoff from the Mario series, and that's the uh, Yoshi's Island like area of this game, which is also a spinoff. So I thought that'd be really cool and meta. But then I cut the Mario games from my list, so because <laughs> I wanted to make room for for more stuff that maybe people hadn't heard as much. Um, uh, this game is probably still my favorite, or has my favorite versions of both Bowser and Peach. It's super amazing. Ah, uh, I don't know. Peach in Mario Plus Rabbids is pretty good too. Can you stop with the chair squeaking? It's I, it's impossible to edit out. I don't know. This it's it's just a very squeaky chair. It is, but you're the one who like can't stay still in it. I mean, you're, I know you're 15, that's. I can't hold it against you. Uh, maybe we should trade chairs. Except this one's really comfortable. I'm <laughs> sitting in my work from home office chair that my amazing wifey got me when I got my new job. But we're talking about fidget games. Uh, Peach from Mario Plus Rabbits. Yeah. No, I haven't played Mario Plus Rabbids, so... Hmm. I guess I should. You and uh, Lemon Boy really like that game. It's got some really great music. Composed by Grant Kirkhope. Composed by Grant Kirkhope, which you already mentioned. Hmm. Alright, well, before we uh, spoil anything, anything else to say about armed battle? Armed opponent? Battle against an armed opponent? Battle against a weird opponent? Do, do, do. Okay, Uh, no, next, I'm so excited because I finally get to announce a game that has a Japanese title, because this game for a long time was only available in Japan, so I'm going to give you its Japanese title, and then we'll talk a little more about it when we come back. It is my turn, right? Yeah, because I did Mystic Quest, and then you did that one. This is not a Square game, this is a Konami game, and the name of the game is Akamaju Special. Boku Dracula-kun, and we're going to listen to Stage 1, Castle. And if you listen closely, part of this might sound a little bit familiar to you. Thank you. 
And that was Beginning from Castle Video... Oh, wait, no, sorry. That was Stage 1, Castle, from Akamaju Special, Boku Dracula Kun. Now, if that Japanese name sounds familiar at all to any of you who are a little bit in the know, Akamaju Densetsu, or Demon Castle, is the Japanese name for the Castlevania series. Akamaju Special Boku Dracula Kun was finally, officially released in English on May 16, 2019, as part of the Castlevania Anniversary Collection, where it was called Kid Dracula. This game was originally released on the Famicom in Japan uh, in 1990, as I said, published by Konami, and it was composed officially by the Konami Kukeha Club, which is like the collective that composed a lot of games for Konami back in the day. Um, and I believe that this game was specifically composed by Satoko Miyawaki and Shinji Tasaka. And I think that might have been the longest introduction for the game track, well, since like three episodes ago when you introduced the Mad Monster Mansion version of Smash Bros. <laughs> for the Switch. Uh, what'd you think of this one, bud? Mm, it was very nice. Which is totally what you think of when you think Castlevania, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, man. It was so much fun, you guys, when we were listening to this and we got to that 30 second part that. Da, 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 da. I can't even do it. I can't sing it in a minor, in a major key. Because it's in a minor key from, from beginning, <laughs> from Castlevania 3. They take that and totally turn it on its head. It's amazing. And uh, this, it's so fun. So bouncy. It's bouncy, bouncy, bouncy. Like that first track I had. And like the last track I have for today. Which is why, when I went with Mystic Quest, I didn't pick a happy, fun, bouncy tune. I picked a rocker. Um, I don't know much about this game. Uh, it's, it's a parody, kind of, of the Castlevania series, although I've also heard that it's kind of a spin-off, maybe? Uh, I know that Kid Dracula cameos on the Castlevania stage in Super Smash Bros. for the Switch. <laughs> Smash Ultimate, I should just call it by its name. <laughs> but, yeah, I don't know a whole lot about the game itself, but... Sounds fun. Probably be fun. Konami did a pretty good job back in the day. So, yeah. That was fun. Have you got something fun for us next? Yes, I do. What What do you have that's fun? Mario Kart. Mario Kart. See, you're bringing all the Mario. We could totally <laughs> just do a side quest or a side game episode. You're calling it side quest. Side game episode of just Mario games and not repeat a single game and still play our usual 14 tracks. <laughs> <laughs> we could probably do that with Pokemon, too. And maybe Kirby. And pro probably a lot of these on the list, actually. Yeah. I think we tried to stay away, except for Mario Kart, apparently, from series that, like, spawned whole other series of their own. Uh, I don't think we have any Luigi games tonight. I don't think we have any Wario games tonight. I don't think we have any Yoshi games tonight. We don't have any, um, what do you call it? Man, it was just on my mind. Oh, like Zero. We don't have any Zero games, like the Mega Man X Zero games. Um, I didn't pick anything from Knuckles Chaotix, although that's really only because I forgot, because I totally <laughs> love the soundtrack from Knuckles Chaotix, even though the game is not super great. Um, we already played something from Shadow of the Hedgehog a while back, and frankly, that soundtrack doesn't have a whole lot of really wonderful stuff on it. So, anyway, we didn't go that route. We, uh, At least I decided to do more like one-off titles. But... That's real way wide segue, because you already introduced your next track, and then I just totally talked over everything. Um, the exception to that, I guess, is Mario Kart, which Shukapau is bringing something from. And which game did you pull from? This is Koopa Cape from Mario Kart Wii. Wii! Wii! The worst one! <laughs> Music-wise, <laughs> Dude. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I don't hate the Mario Kart Wii soundtrack as much as some other podcasters who shall go unnamed because I have much mad respect for them, <laughs> even though we disagree sometimes. Um, it's not the best. Mario Kart 8 has the best, objectively even the best soundtrack. You're wrong, I know we'll still be friends, <laughs> whatever you think about, about Mario Kart Wii soundtrack. Mario Kart Wii. We didn't. That was not in sync. <laughs> anyway. Um, no, it wasn't in sync. It was Dave Vollmer. Demon Tomato Dave. Yay. Yeah, bad. Bad jokes. Going out of control. Let's just play the song. What is it again? Koopa Cape.
And we're back. That was Koopa Cape from Mario Kart Wii. Released in 2008 for the Nintendo Wii, obviously. By Nintendo and composed by Ryo Nagamatsu. Hmm. At least that's who was listed. I have mad love for Ryo Nagamatsu. He's done some amazing, amazing, amazing work. Okami... Wait, was that him? No, no, it was Ray Kondo. Dang it, I'm doing it again. <laughs> but he's done some of the, the Zelda stuff lately. And he's really good. He knows his stuff. You know, I'll go ahead and name drop them now because I'm really starting to agree with the Super Marcado Bros about this soundtrack. <laughs> that was obnoxious, dude. <laughs> it wasn't bad. It wasn't bad. It was not badly composed. All the notes were in the right places. It was not out of tune. This was not a bad song, by any means. There are a lot of folks who would probably consider it very good. But it was obnoxious. There was a lot of just, like, super crazy wild in your face. Da, 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 da. Eh. You don't notice it when you're playing the game. This game is really, really super good. Um, I, I love Mario Kart Wii. Maybe it's because in my mind I can't help but compare it to Koopa Beach from Mario 64. And I love that track. Love it. So that's probably not fair of me. I did really like that underwater portion. That was cool. Um, why did you pick this one out of the rest of the soundtrack and all of the other Mario Kart games that are out there? Spite. Spite? Yeah. Oh, oh because of what Parkato said about it? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> also because I love it. I mean, that's cool. You love what you love. I'm, I'm not going to yuck on your yum. That's, you know... It's to each his own. Uh, I've definitely played tracks that you didn't really think were that great, but you have the tact not to say that you didn't love them. Um, you're not going to hurt my feelings, by the way. If, if you do, you don't have to be so reluctant to say that you're not as big on certain tracks as me. We play very good music. That's what we think is very good music. And somebody out there is going to resonate with every one of our picks. And the same people that loved your track are probably not going to love my next track. <laughs> This is the biggest departure from everything else that I have, and it came from me listening to lots of different side game soundtracks and wanting to go kind of kind of out of my comfort zone a little bit. Now, I like this track, and I think that there is a certain faction of our listeners, a certain portion of the VGM podcast fan community, who is really going to love this. This game is from, it's a spin-off from a series that I have played very little of. I've never played this game. I've barely even heard of it. The game is called Umbrella Corps, or Cores, and it is a spin-off of the Resident Evil series. And the name of the track is Second to None. And it will be up to you, VGM Podcast fans, to decide if it really is. I'm not going to have a whole lot to say about this one. Um, Umbrella Corp was composed by Koda Suzuki, Akihiko Narita, Azusa Kato, and Yasumasa Kitagawa. I am not 
very familiar, I don't think, with any of those names. Um, some of them sound a little bit familiar, but I can't tell you a whole lot about what they composed. I really should have done more research before this episode. This game was developed and published by Capcom for Windows and PS4 in 2016. And it is not well loved. <laughs> but the music was pretty good. Uh, a lot of them were mm, like vocally tunes, I think. But when I skimmed through the soundtrack, this one really jumped out at me. It's it's very different. It doesn't have the same melodic quality of the tunes that I usually love and like the other stuff I brought to the table. But I love that rocking the It's cool. Kind of reminds me of Doom a little bit. It's definitely harder, more in your face than what I think of when I usually think of Resident Evil. So, but I don't know much about the game other than it is officially on um, all the pages I saw called a spin-off of Resident Evil, so it qualifies. What do you think? <laughs> uh, like I said, you don't have to be diplomatic if you don't really love it. It's cool. Yeah, it was. It was good. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Well, at least you didn't call my track obnoxious. <laughs> at least my track didn't have banjo and steel drums at the same time. <laughs> oh, You know what we should do? We should take Koopa Beach. No, not Koopa Beach. Koopa Cove? Is that what it was? Koopa Cape. Koopa Cape. Take Koopa Cape and Second to None and mash them up into the same song. What do you think? I'm totally going to do that and put it under the blooper reel. <laughs> Unless it's just horrible, and then I won't do that. <laughs> oh, it's getting late. I'm getting tired. I'm a sick man. Okay, now I have to say, I love when that track went back to the when it took the loop, when it returned to like it's when it did the repeat. You know, there's like an official term for it. I'm forgetting. It was really good. It was very good. It's very good music because Shukapau, everything we play is what. Very good music. <laughs> okay, we, we got that. Hey, you don't have Tales of Symphonia this time. And we, yeah, don't have, and we don't have Chrono Trigger this time. Do we even have anything from Yasunori Matsuda or Motoi Sakuraba? No, but we have Kirko. Wow. And it's your fault, because you picked this topic. <laughs> that's crazy. Okay. Well, that's cool. What kind of Kirko do you have? Mario plus Rabbids. Mario, Mario, Mario! Yeah. Plus Rabbids. You know, I almost yeah. picked something from Raving Rabbids. Yeah. That's a weird soundtrack, too. It's obnoxious, but, but, uh, but it's obnoxious by design. There's some pretty okay stuff in it, but it was one of the first ones I cut. But I am glad the Rabbids make a, make an appearance here, because the Rabbids themselves are a spinoff of what series? Rayman? Yes, very good. Uh, very good! I'm so proud of you. You get a cookie. Tomorrow, because, yeah. wait. Yeah, tomorrow. Oh. Or maybe one of those Boston Cream Pie Little Debbie things. Yeah. Yay. All right. Uh, what song did you pick? Is it the one that you've been talking about playing for a long time? No, I'm going to play that later. Okay, cool. Well, which one is it? This is Lava Forge. Ooh.
Kirko. Now this is objectively very good music. <laughs> oh, he's so amazing. He can come from Banjo Kazooie and then do this. He's just the man's a genius. I love Grant Kirkup so much. I really hope someday we can get him on the podcast. Let's you would you would lose on. your ever loving mind if we were actually talking to Grant Kirkup. <laughs> Let's just go on over to Twitter. Right. Do, 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 do. Go on over. Kirko. To Shukapow's Twitter. At Shukapow, everybody. That's the official Twitter for the show, because I'm an old man, and I'm allergic to social media. <laughs> Go ahead. Well, I, I, you started the YouTube channel. That's not social media. That's that's just media. Anyway, it's fine. Um, <laughs> it's anti-social media. <laughs> Only in the comments section. Quarantine media. <laughs> uh, maybe that's why I'm breaking out in hives. Anyway, uh, what about Twitter? No, I, I just I you follow should... Grant Kirkhope on Twitter. Oh, I thought you were Twitter. going to read something about his Twitter. Well, talk about this. When when was it made? Who published it? What's yeah, it's on the okay, Switch? Okay. Mario, Mario Plus Rabbids was released for the Switch by Ubisoft, composed by Kirkhope, and uh, released in 2017. It was developed by Ubisoft. Yes. So it yeah, was that's published what, by that's Nintendo, what I mean. right? I think so. Huh. It that's just said Ubisoft yeah. on that developer thingy, whatever. I don't know. But yeah, this was a really cool, groundbreaking game because it was one of the first times, maybe the first time? No, that was Donkey Kong Country, where Nintendo trusted one of its, like, trusted franchises, or not, prized franchises, out to another publisher. With Donkey Kong Country, it was rare, um, but here it was Ubisoft. And they made... When they announced this game, everybody was like, WTF, mate, like... What the heck is going on? <laughs> Mario and Rabbids? Are you kidding me? And then they released it. And it was actually really good. And just the game is really good. But the soundtrack... Man, the soundtrack is great. Why'd you pick this one? Because it's good. Yeah, but the whole thing is good. So why this one? Eh, it's definitely my favorite theme on the soundtrack. Besides something else that we'll get to later in the season. <laughs> Well, I like it because it brought a different flavor to the evening. Um, we haven't really played anything quite like this tonight. Um, it's really good. We're showing lots of different aspects of very good music on all of these very different kinds of side games. Anything else to add? Uh, no. Okay. Well, I'm going to get to my second Mega Man game of the night. So we have two Mega Man spinoffs, two Kirby spinoffs... 17 Mario spinoffs. No, wait. <laughs> um, <laughs> how many? Like, four? Because Mario Karts, Mario RPG, and then this one. Yeah. Is that it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I was going to do Mario Paint, but then I didn't. But we'll do Mario Paint some other time. I was going to do make, uh, make the monkey song, which you should look it up, because it's a song that you remember if you played Mario Paint, but you do not do not think of monkey song when you think of this song. But it's really good. Look it up. That's my honorable mention for tonight. My next track... For tonight. Let me um, <clears throat> read the plot of this game from Wikipedia. Mega Man Soccer is set after Mega Man 4. A televised soccer game is interrupted when an explosion occurs on the field. As the smoke clears, all the players are suddenly replaced with several of Dr. Wily's robot masters. Having seen the events occur on screen, the inventor, Dr. Light, who apparently watches soccer when he's not inventing robots that his ex-partner will inevitably turn to evil, sends his greatest creation, the hero Mega Man, along with some of his own robot masters, to stop them. The game has no ending. That's from the official plot summary. From Mega Man Soccer, this is Wood Field.
Well, I don't know much about soccer, but I know a thing or two about Mega Man, and that track is pure Mega Man right there. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> that's good stuff, man. Oh, that's such good stuff. What do you think? You first. Mega Man. Yes, for sure. Now, I said that didn't really sound like Woodman, but you pointed out that the snare actually kind of kind of does, and th the rhythm is, is pretty similar. Um, so, there are different fields in this game, and each field is controlled by a certain Robot Master, and the Robot Master has different other Robot Masters on his team. Um, I thought at first there were there was like one like robot master team captain from each game, but you have Cutman and Elect Man and Fireman, and so I don't know I don't really know how they split it up, but I will say this: the music in this game is really really good. Uh, there were a lot of really good tracks, and they don't sound anything like the tracks that the robot master originally had in their original game, but they still sound very Mega Man. Super good. Um, I had to listen to almost all of this one, kind of like Mystic Quest, and also kind of like Kid Dracula, um, and also kind of like Street Fighter 2010. A lot of these games had really good soundtracks, and I really encourage all of you guys to go and, and listen to them. They're super great. This game was not very good, though. <laughs> uh, it sounds really fun, actually, when you think about the concept of it, but apparently the controls were just not good, and... Man, in a Mega Man game, you gotta have good controls. I mean, that's what makes or breaks the game for you. So what do you think, man? What do you think? Anything else to add? It was good. I took all the words, huh? <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, perhaps you will talk more about... Oh, wait. Hold on. <laughs> uh, Mega Man Soccer <clears throat> was composed by Toshio Akamoto, Norihiko Tagashi, and Kenichi Tomizawa. I'm a little more familiar with those names than the ones I mentioned for Umbrella Corp, but not a whole lot more familiar. I do think I recognize them as Capcom composers. That song was Woodfield from Mega Man Soccer, which was developed by Sun L and published by Capcom for the Super NES in 1994. Now, what is your last game of the night? I started with... I started with Mystery Dungeon. I'm ending with Mystery Dungeon. Alrighty. This is Oddity Cave from Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Rescue Team DX. And uh, just a note of warning, this is uh, Medwee. So it's kind of long and pretty diverse. It keeps changing. But uh, settle in. Enjoy. Sounds like it shouldn't get old, right?
All right, and that was Oddity Cave, one of my favorite dungeons from Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Rescue Team DX, released in 2020 by the Pokemon Company and Nintendo for the Nintendo Switch and composed by Keisuke Ito. All right, cool. You were telling me all kinds of cool stuff while we were listening to this, so have at it, man. Go for it. All right. This is actually a medley of tracks from Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Gates to Infinity. Just a second. Which is a really cool name. <laughs> <laughs> and you said that this area didn't have music in the first game? It was like an event dungeon? Uh, yeah, it was a, uh, a dungeon for like an event, kind of like the mystery gifts for you. And go to a certain location or enter a certain code at a certain time. And you, yeah. you know, get some stuff. Uh, Mystery Dungeon Deluxe actually has a system called Wonder Codes that Nintendo is releasing. And you enter them onto a certain area on the menu screen and you get cool stuff. Okay. I did that recently. You had so, a lot of cool stuff. Cool. That's very cool. So this is a medley. What are the names of the songs that are in it? Um, the songs here are Great Glacier, Hazy Pass, Magnagate Motif, Daybreak Ridge, Forest of Shadows, and Ragged Mountain. Gates to Infinity was released in 2012 for the Nintendo 3DS. And did you look up who the composer for that one is? It doesn't say. for a second. Oh, okay. Composers Kisuke Iro and Yasuhiro Ka Kawago. Kawago, okay. Yasuhiro Kawago. Okay, cool. Oh, Not... Gates to Infinity had uh, you know for Pokemon, that makes it good. <laughs> Not um <clears throat> Not that the other ones are bad. Bias. Just not as good as uh, as Unova because Gen Five. <laughs> <laughs> These are not the regular Pokemon composers, which we're getting a lot of tonight on these spinoff games. Uh, not the same composers you would usually see, except for that Kirby game that you play. But the Kirby game that I am playing is not by. Jun Ishikawa and Hirokazu Ando. Mm -hmm. You'll hear a little bit more about that in a minute, but first, some end of show business. Next week, we are going to be coming finally to a theme that we have been dancing around for a while. We've mentioned it several times, but I am pleased to announce that we have the blessing of the Super Mercado Brothers to feature a topic that they first introduced to me, and which I introduced to Shu Kapow, called The Five Finger Fanfare. If you haven't heard their episode, well, I would encourage you to check it out. Uh, I'm going to be posting it in the show notes next week, and I'm actually going to be going to be pulling a little bit of audio from that episode to introduce the concept, because nobody can sell it like the brothers can, and because they said I could, and it's really good. So, you'll learn more about that next week as we bring some amazing tunes to you. Once again, we always do... Yeah, very good music. I'm rambling. <laughs> but for tonight, this is going to be my last tune of the evening. Really quickly, though, uh, you can find the podcast on pretty much any podcatcher. We're uh, at home on anchor.fm, where you can go if you would like to leave us a little voicemail and have your voice featured on the show talking about a song. You guys are always welcome to come in and make submissions, make requests. We definitely like getting feedback from y'all. You can also find the episodes on YouTube, which is a great place to come and comment on them and uh, share things with other folks who like to comment on things. It always makes me happy when I log in and see that there are comments on the, on the episodes. So even if you don't listen to the episode on YouTube, it would be really cool if you could log in and come and say something sometime. And you can also always shoot up Shoot Kapow, hit up Shoot Kapow on Twitter and make requests there or comment on the episode or uh, tell him to stop posting dumb teenager stuff. No, I'm just kidding. Don't do that. That's his thing. <laughs> and it's not dumb. He usually posts cool teenager stuff. Uh, I approve it. His mom monitors his Twitter pretty closely. So, um, so yeah. So don't say anything that's going to get him in trouble with his mom. <laughs> but you can find him on Twitter at Shoot Kapow. I would also like to thank Ben Dishman 
and Kung Fu Carlito for the amazing art that adorns our show because it is amazing and wonderful, and they're both amazing guys with great podcasts of their own. Carlos is also one of our patrons, who I'm going to start shouting out at the end of each of these episodes. So thank you, Carlos. Thank you also to The Last Recon, Alex Messenger of A VGM Journey Video Game Music Podcast, and finally, Skeletroy, who I would also like to thank for our amazing theme song. You can find links to all this stuff in the show notes. And I think that that's everything. Did I forget anything, Shukapow? No. I don't okay. think so. All right. My most recent tweet is about how my Pokemon Soul Silver cartridge is broken. Hey. Aw, I didn't know that. What happened to it? Uh, I can't do the game corner mini game. When I try to, the screen just goes black and it freezes. The music oh. still plays, but nothing else happens. Is that one of the ones that we got like secondhand from uh, through like Amazon or something? I think you guys got it along with Heart Gold for me for Christmas. One time. Oh. I'm not sure if the Heart of Gold from. one's going to have the same problem, but... Well, I guess we'll have to find out. I might... Uh. Like, the reason I need to do this is to get Thunderbolt on my chin chow so that it's actually good. You're saying things that I don't understand now. Yeah. There's a... <laughs> a I assume there's a Pokemon called yeah. chin chow. It's for my water type only run. This thing's an electric type. It has a bad nature move combination. Okay. So... Yeah. That, yeah, I remember vaguely. Electric move. Okay, cool. So I need Thunderbolt, but I uh, can't get it without the game corner until, like, before the last fight in the game. <laughs> okay, well, that stinks. Uh, I'm sorry about that, bud. But you know what? Hopefully our last track of the night will pick you up. And I think I have a little something that is definitely, definitely going to lift your spirits. The last track of the evening is from a game called Kirby's Block Ball. This was composed by Sukezo Uyama and Ryui Taka- Takagi. Well, wow. pulled the shukapow there. <laughs> uh, this is, well, this is stage 10, and I'll say that again before we get into it. This was made for the Game Boy. It was developed by HAL and published by Nintendo in 1995. And Kirby's Block Ball is a breakout clone. You know what breakout is, right? Um, it's kind of like Arkanoid. Wow. And father-son road trip. Different generations of EGM. So Arkanoid is a game where you play this little platform, basically. And you go back and forth, kind of like Pong, but sideways. And a little ball comes down, and you use it to bounce up and clear blocks oh, that. from the ceiling. Yeah, it's that one. And you can like get power-ups that make the platform longer, or... You can make it shorter and get more points, or you can make it sticky so that you can move around and, like, shoot the ball up. Anyway, it's kind of like that, uh, except Kirby. And, well, the music is great. Go listen to it. But I really can't sell it any better than this one user that I found on Google who goes by the name of Waddle... No, of Bandana Do. And here is what Mr. Bandana Do <clears throat> had to say about this game. Kirby's Block Ball is simply the greatest game ever made, while other pitiful attempts of the video game art form, like Super Mario 64 and Ocarina of Time, attempt to immerse the player into the gaming world. The creators of Kirby's Block Ball knew what they were doing when designing the game, and centered it around the sci-fi horror genre. Many psychological ideas and values are questioned, like the legitimizing of global warming and the destruction of the ozone layer. It raises the question of whether or not the Earth is really flat. In fact, this game made me a flat earther within the first five minutes of playing. While a simple-minded fool could call this game dated and basic, it only takes an in-depth look to realize that this game is more than just a game. It's a lifestyle. I play this game every day, and it makes me very happy. Maybe in the sequel they could add in some funny dances. Or maybe give the game some DLC. Three stars. All right, everybody. Until next time, play very good games, be very good people, and keep listening to very good music. We'll see you next time.
Greetings, gamers. I'm Bedroth. And I'm Shoot Kapow. And you're listening to Season 2 of Very Good Music. Am I supposed to say something here? I don't know what I'm supposed to say. A VGM podcast. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. A VGM podcast. Booba real. <laughs> certainly, certainly not with that song, though. That was Sky Tower. Oh, no. We're not introducing the song yet. Aw, oh, dang it. <laughs> that, was such a, that was such a cool seg- segue opportunity. We'll keep the segue for the blooper reel, though, okay? Okay, fine. <laughs> well, welcome back, everybody. Nope. Jeez. Yeah, this is quite a false start. Maybe we'll release this as, like, a preview. Welcome to Season 2. <laughs> <laughs> all bloopers, all the time. Yay. Well, that's it for me. What were you pulling up there a second ago when I got all dad on you? Uh, my next song. Yeah, that, that was like an invitation to a segue oh. so that you could actually say what the next song is. Alright, well... Well, I will say two things. No, I'll probably say more than two things because it's me. I'm Bedroth. I say lots of things. Which one is that? Is that Spartan? I can't remember. I think it is. Oh, yeah. So, from Ryuji Sasai and Yasuhiro Kawakami, that was Battle Three from Final Fantasy Mystic Quest. Okay, hold on. Experiencing some technical difficulties, folks. What, what, what the? Stop it! What, stop what it. is that? Nothing. Don't worry about it. Okay. Okay. Eh. Uh. Dump. Stupid guy on my phone. Okay. Have a great night. Dang it! No. No. Almost made it. Ruby.